Hi, uh, everyone. Thanks for coming in. Uh, today we are going to talk about VMware Cloud Director extension for uh, data solutions specific to the tons of services that we have been able to provide through VCD, VMware Cloud Director, through an extensibility. If you are familiar with VMware Cloud Director and its extensibility capabilities, we want to just uh, you know make sure that we provide more and more easy button to you as a provider and for the consumer as well, just to make sure that various services that, 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 that we can enable through VMware Cloud Director. So let us look at what uh, Cloud Director data solution is. Is essentially, you know, we wanted to make sure that we provide various data and messaging services to the tenants with minimum efforts. It's all about giving an easy button to the consumer. It's all about time to market. How quickly I can have my tenant to deploy a specific, maybe a MongoDB or any of those services quickly and, you know, deliver it the value to the business. Uh, also, the scale is important. We want to make sure that when we are doing the deployment automated of these various services, we want to make sure that they are able to scale as per their business requirements very easily and seamlessly. And also, uh, being a part of Europe here, you definitely are aware of sovereign cloud and sovereign data uh, residency uh, aspects of it. So it also supports various aspects of sovereign cloud uh, tenants requirements. If you are delivering services into a specific country, specific region, they want to make sure that, you know, the databases that they are managing, creating, have the data locality uh, to meet the sovereign cloud compliance. And last but not least is very, very important. It's a multi-tenant data services, right? So when it comes to Tanzu, uh, having it automated, having it uh, delivered it as a service becomes more easier. Otherwise, it takes time for a customer or a tenant to deploy those services by themselves manually. So let us look at what exactly it means, right? It's, it's more of a, you know, a strong set of foundational components for the data solution that we have uh, in terms of, you know, delivering maybe a typical RDBMS or non-SQL type of workloads like VMware SQL, which is created Postgres or MySQL type of uh, environments that you wanted to hand it off to your tenants. Uh, no SQL, typically that you probably are aware of MongoDB. MongoDB again has various editions that you probably are, and we'll talk about it. Uh, RabbitMQ, uh, if you are using uh, VMware Cloud Director, RabbitMQ has been used extensively uh, as a part of the core architecture. We are leveraging that and we are able to deliver, uh, you know, a message broker uh, like RabbitMQ as a service as well, and a GM fire like memory uh, cache kind of database where you have uh, an option to bring and deliver services through GM fire. And, you know, if you talk about AIML, everyone probably heard today about AIML and VMware Foundation for the AI. This is kind of, you know, powered to really take care of those type of workloads as well very easily by delivering real-time data uh, streaming services through Kafka or even delivering requirements for any of the large language models with NVIDIA in the back end as well. And, of course, uh, Green Plum, it has been there for long, so we want to make sure that we are able to uh, bring that also as one of the key data services for you to leverage and deliver it to your customers. And we are adding as we go forward more and more of this. Coming to the requirements, right? Uh, we talk here in the short form as CSC. It's more like container service extension. So we are enabling it through uh, container service extension uh, and a typical version that are listed here for Kubernetes. TKG grid for multi-cloud, cloud director, 10.3.1 or above, and what are the solutions and versions that are supported. So we want to make sure that, you know, we start with something. So we started with RabbitMQ for Kubernetes 1.3, 1.4, and the latest that will be supported automatically as we release newer solutions 1.2 and beyond. MongoDB community editions as well as MongoDB enterprise editions for Kubernetes is what currently supported by DSC. High-level architecture, uh, when it comes to Kubernetes world, uh, definitely you are aware that there is a registry where the things are available in a public registry. Some customer or some tenants wants to pull that from that registry directly, or some might want to do a local repository. Just pull it once and then have your own local registry available. 
typically in terms of you know if you have a sovereign cloud type of environment totally disconnected so you can have a mechanism where you download locally and then upload it to this particular environment for the tenant so that tenant can say that even my uh, repository even my register is also local that has been pulled away from the public uh, library so total disconnectivity if they really wanted to maintain from sovereign cloud perspective is achievable as well again it is through ui plugin very very simple you just have to deploy it and then uh, enable the plugin and you are in the business so again the steps wise high level overview again you know some steps are you know where you can uh, setting up a container registry if it's a local or you can uh, connect to your public image uh, registry and pull start pulling that particular registries that you want uh, and then basically publishing those services to your tenants so as a provider you can either provide a connectivity for your customer or for your tenant to the public registry or you can pull it for them and define a local registry and basically release it to them where customer can start installing this data solution operators uh, for tkg and with csc 4.0 we already did a, a pre created with so we want to make sure that you know we give more easy button for you as a provider and for customer or tenant to consume it as well and then again as a customer as a tenant we'll just follow the five step number 5 of creating an instance for the data services could be mongodb community could be mongodb enterprise and things like that very very easily so key advantages are very straight forward simplification it's all about simplification whether it's a deployment whether it's a upgrade at a scale we want to make sure that it is easy button for you and as well as for the tenant definitely high availability always is the main concern when it comes to productionalize your deployment so it always uh, supporting you in a high availability of your services easily monitoring and alerting is a key aspects of any application right so we can't go away from that so it is well integrated with grafana and prometheus to give those kind of you know various metrics on monitoring and alerting and backup and restore again as usual is required we want to make sure that it is there as well and the process overall simplified from where we were earlier and now where we are and we are also simplifying it more and more as we move forward so what is new in the 1.2 release right so mongodb community edition we have given more easy button whether it's install modify or even upgrade the community additions very very easily enterprise also we want to make sure that we support uh, mongodb ops manager to give you more views into your mongodb environment api support is always key because, because most of the providers that i have seen they wanted to use ui at the beginning but then they will switch into api to make it more easy for overall end to end operations and also other third party integrations that go along with delivering the service when you create that service right and localization same as uh, you know what vmware cloud directory is currently supporting so you don't really have to worry about uh, multilingual language support so it's already there so just to recap as a administrator whether it's a provider whether it's a tenant or the user and how the users will consume this various uh, community operator as a user and 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 as a various workflows actually there are a lot of information uh, that i talked about it's already kind of you know, summarized into this particular slide key things that you wanted to make sure that you know the container registries are keeping the docker images and dependent repositories very easily and seamlessly as a provider life cycle management of the provision services either you can do it for your tenant or you can hand it off to your tenant very easily so that they know what they want to do and upgrade very very easily i have a small demo that demo will illustrate more of what those workflows are and same thing with the tenant user to monitor various aspects of the services that have been deployed so let's go quickly through a demo one of my colleague galina slowi slowa as well has created a demo just want to make sure that you know thank you for her and her efforts let us have a look for the demo So here, basically, if you can see, it's running into a cloud director as a plugin. So it is there. Uh, you probably are familiar with this UI. Uh, going to the next is basically giving you various solutions available, and also when you are looking at the solutions, 
uh, today what we have done is I have a MongoDB community, RabbitMQ. And if you want to publish it, you can publish it to various tenants. You have Coke, Nike, Pepsi type of tenants created. I'm creating and publishing it to an app launch pad as one of my uh, tenant, just to make sure that you know, it is available into my uh, uh, Catalog actually, that's what App Launchpad does. App Launchpad is basically getting revamped as a content hub that you will see in future. Uh, but Feel and Look will have the same thing. We want to consolidate and give you more uh, tool set to really make a use of it. So we are kind of you know using uh, some templates and trying to add it to the content registry. The screen study here showing is like you know it is creating. Uh, it's, it's allowing you to update very very seamlessly any of those without any issues. And let me just scroll through quick because I have just a minute left. So I'm going to go and say here is what uh, a customer or a tenant can say, hey, you want to upgrade? Very easy button. Just click on it. It will perform the upgrade of that cluster very, very easily or that particular solution. So what I'm doing here right now, creating a MongoDB instance, which is my enterprise version of the community version, selecting a TKG cluster, providing some credentials, and then picking up a template that we just saw a few minutes ago that will be used to deploy with CPU and memory, one gig memory. You can play with those numbers uh, later as well, or you can define more of those uh, templates as per your requirements. Again, when I'm doing it, I'm creating a replica of my instance. That's what we are talking about, high availability, right? So we are creating those three replicas more than enough for a database. You don't need more than that. And then uh, this screen is talking about creating a community edition. So it's a different flavor of MangoDB you are familiar with. So we are creating it, and we want to make sure that we'll consume the specific template and then deploy the instance very, very quickly. And I think it's uh, execution, and you can see how it is being deployed, and it can be upgraded if you want to. So it's all uh, easy for provider as well as for the customer as a tenant. Thank you. I hope you liked your, uh, like the demo and presentation. Thanks for your time.